In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to get started with Premiere Pro. So I'm going to cover importing, creating a new project, working in the timeline, transitions, music, and uh, exporting your file when you're done. Hey everyone, I'm the Web Guru. I do tutorials on audio, video, photography. And before I start editing inside of Premiere Pro, I like to get organized. So I've created a project folder here. So I'm going to rename this to skateboarding video. That's the topic of my video. And then inside of my project folder, I've created three subfolders, one for the media, one for the Premiere Pro project file, and another one for my final exports. Then I've gathered my media and I've placed it inside of the media folder. So you can see all of my video clips and some music. So now I can come into Premiere Pro and create a new project by going up to File, New, Project. And so here I'm also going to give the project file a descriptive name and then the location is very important. I'm going to click on the Browse button. I'm going to go to my project folder and then I'm going to choose the Project Files folder. So then I'll click on choose. Um, everything else you can set at default and then I'm going to click on OK. This will bring me into the Premiere Pro interface. Every one of these little windows is called a panel and the arrangement of panels on your screen is called a workspace. And one of the simplest ones that I like to work in is called the editing workspace. And you can switch over to the editing workspace by going up to Window, Workspaces, Editing. So now let's import the media. So I'm going to go up to File, Import, and I've already gathered all of my media into the media folder, and I am going to select all of the clips. So I'm going to click on the first one, shift click on the last one to select them all, and then import them. And now I can see them over here. This is called the project panel. It shows me all of my media. There's a couple of views. One of them is called list view, where you can see them as a list. I like to work in icon view, which will show me a nice visual thumbnail for all of my clips. Now the project panel can uh, feel a little bit small. So I'll show you one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to move my mouse over top of the project panel and then hit the accent key on my keyboard to maximize the panel. And then there's another little control. This is the zoom slider, so I can make the thumbnails bigger and smaller. So that's very useful. And now let's talk about some basic editing. I'm going to double click on a clip. So I'm going to double click on this one here. Um, that will open it up in the source monitor, which allows you to preview your media. So you can click on the play button. Most people prefer to use the space bar, which is a lot faster. Space bar to play, space bar to pause. Um, and you can see there's a little playhead here. And you can move through the video by dragging or simply by hitting the space bar and playing. Now this clip happens to be around 15 seconds long, which is a little bit long. So now I'm going to select a portion of it by marking an in and an out. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to move my playhead to around three seconds. I'm going to mark in using this button. And then I'm going to move a little bit later, about five seconds later. And then I'm going to mark an out by clicking on this little button right here. And now what I've done is I've selected a portion of the clip and I'm going to drag it into the timeline. So all I have to do is drag and drop it down here. And now inside of the timeline, I can see my clip. Um, and now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add some more clips. So I'm going to go to the project panel. I'm going to maximize it with the accent key. And then I'm going to open up another clip by double clicking on it. I'll hit the space bar to play or I can drag the playhead to play. I'm going to mark an in. You can use these buttons or you can also use keyboard shortcut I for in and then keyboard shortcut O to mark an out. I've selected a portion of the clip. I'm going to drag it right after clip one. Now I'm going to go back to the project panel. I'm going to select another clip and I'm going to mark an in and an out. 
So you're kind of uh, seeing a pattern here. And then I'm going to drag this into the timeline. So here is the timeline. And so the timeline is very important. So let me give you a little orientation. One thing I like to do here is V1. Video stands for video track one. I'm gonna double click this empty space here to increase the track height. And now I can actually see the contents. Down here is a scroll bar. So you can scroll to the left and to the right. And then these little circular handles allow you to zoom in and out of the timeline. So that way you can see it a little bit better. So now I can clearly see my three clips. If you want to play through the timeline, all you have to do is hit your space bar to play inside of the timeline, and you get to now view the edited media inside of the program monitor over here. And these are the four basic panels inside of Premiere Pro. You have your media in the project panel. You preview your media inside of the source monitor. You assemble your clips inside of the timeline. And then you view your timeline inside of the program monitor. Now I'm gonna add some more clips into the timeline, but it's gonna be the same manner that I did it before. So I'll speed the video up a little bit. Okay, so I've added some more clips into the timeline, and so now I have a total of six clips. Um, and when I watch some of these clips, they seem a little bit long. So I am going to start trimming clips. So trimming is simply just making them shorter. So I want this first clip to, you know, probably be just around three seconds long. So I'm gonna move my playhead to around three seconds. And then to trim a clip, all you have to do is drag its edges. So I'm gonna move my, make sure you also have the selection tool here selected. Then I'm gonna to move to the edge of the clip until my cursor becomes that red arrow. Then you just have to click and drag to trim the clip. So now the clip is shorter. There's a gap in the timeline which you can delete by right clicking and then choosing ripple delete or you can just click the gap to select it and hit delete on your keyboard. And now the gap is gone. And so now I can trim some of these other clips. You can also trim the beginning of the clip. And then I can trim the end of the clip like that. I can close the gaps and then keep going through the timeline to trim. Now the opposite of trimming is extending. That means making a clip longer. So let's say this clip here, let's say I trim too much of it like that. Now it's too short. So if I want to extend it, it's the same thing. I just click on the edge of the clip like that and then drag to make it longer. And you can make it as long as you want until you run out of media because there is a limit to how much media there is in the clip. So just by dragging the edges, you can trim and extend. Now, if you want to move clips in the timeline, it's actually pretty easy. You just have to click in the middle of the clip and then just move them over. So I just dragged it over in the timeline. If you want to select multiple clips, you can shift click multiple clips and move them over. Or you can also drag your mouse. So you see like this, I'm dragging like a little rectangle to select multiple clips. And then I can move them around and close gaps as needed. But you do have to be careful when you move clips. So for example, I would like to move clip six before clip five. But if I just drag and drop it, I've actually deleted a portion of clip five, which is not what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna undo that with Command Z, Control Z on Windows, and now I'll show you how to reorder clips inside of the timeline. So uh, I'll show you how to cut and paste clips. So I'm going to select clip six, I'm going to cut, using edit, cut. You can also use command X on Mac, control X on Windows. And then I'm gonna move my playhead before clip five. My favorite way of doing that is actually using the up arrow keys. You can also use the down arrow key to go from clip to clip inside of the timeline. Now that the playhead is at the exact location that I want it to be, I'm gonna go up to edit, paste insert paste will actually overwrite the clip so you want to do paste insert and now clip six is right before clip five you can use this technique to move any clip anywhere so i'm going to select clip four i'm going to cut it then i'm going to use the up arrow key and then i can go up to edit paste insert and there it is now clip four is in a new location i'll close the gap 
and now I like this edit much better. Let's talk about music. I want to add some music to my timeline. So I'm going to go into my project panel. In this case, I'll go to list view and I'm going to scroll through and find my music. Here it is. I have an MP3 file and I'm simply going to drag it into the timeline. But in this case, I'm going to put it into A2, which is audio track two, right to the very beginning of the track. And now I have some nice music. Now the music is a little bit loud, so, uh, and it's a little bit long. So if I zoom out of the timeline, you can see that the music is much longer than the video, so I need to trim it. You can switch over to the razor tool, and then I'm going to cut the music right here. So I'll click on the music to split it into two pieces. Then I'll go back to the selection tool, and then select the second clip here, and then delete it. Now when I zoom in, I can see that the music ends at the same time as the video. So that's what I want. I'm also going to increase the track height for the music by double clicking this empty space here. And when I listen to this music, it's a little bit too loud. So there is like a little white line across the music clip. If I click and drag it down, I can actually decrease the volume of it until it's uh, less loud. So that sounds better. Now I do hear like a lot of distracting noises from the original video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute A1. So I'm going to hit the M button to mute it and now the audio is much cleaner. All right, this is great. So I'm almost done. I'm going to add some transitions. I would like the video to smoothly fade in from black. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so that it's easier to see clip one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the very beginning of the clip. I'm going to right click and choose apply default transitions. And now you can see it added the default transition to the clip. Um, the default is actually one second long, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit slow. So I'm going to double click the transition and change it to half a second. Now, since my video is 30 frames per second, half a second would be 15 frames. So I'll click on OK. I'm going to do the same thing at the end. So I'm going to right click, apply default transition, double click it, and change it to 15 frames, which is half a second. And now the video fades in from black and then fades out. But the music ended very suddenly, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do is the same thing to the music. I'm going to right click the very end, apply the default transition, double click the transition, and I'm actually going to increase this value to around three seconds. And now the music will fade out smoothly. So I like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the beginning. I'm going to right click, apply the default transition. In this case, it'll be one second, which I'm fine with. Now, if you want, you can right click the edits between the clips and apply the default transition. I'm not going to do that because I actually like them to just have cuts between them. So that's completely up to you. And now my video is actually ready to export. So I'll show you how to do that. Click anywhere inside of the timeline, go up to File, Export, Media. Under the Format menu, you can choose H.264. For the preset, go ahead and choose Match Source High Bitrate. High Bitrate simply means higher quality. Click on the output name, so this file name here in blue, and then choose the Final Exports folder that we created previously. And then you can name your export. So I'll just call that skateboarding, click on save. Um, and then you can click on the export button right here. Now my file has exported. So if I go over to my computer and if I open up the final exports folder, there it is. If I double click it, I can preview it here. I can watch it here on my computer. And then I can also 
upload this file to YouTube, to social media, I can share it with my friends. So this is the basic workflow inside of Premiere Pro. I hope it was helpful to you. Now, of course, there's a lot more to cover. Premiere Pro is a professional program and you can add graphics and still images and text. You can do color correction. There's a lot of techniques inside of the timeline to speed up your workflow. Um, there's a lot of other types of transitions inside of Premiere Pro. You can also add voiceovers. You can do motion graphics and animations. And I'll be covering a lot of these topics in uh, other videos. And you can also look down in the description for uh, resources to kind of take your learning further. Um, I'll be publishing books, creating online courses. So feel free to explore those. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends, uh, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, keep learning and growing.